right, magnetism part two. Um, what you should do first of all is you should go back uh, to part one of magnetism and complete the checklist. This is the checklist for part two. You should complete the checklist for part one. Uh, you'll see, uh, as usual, in the part two booklet, we have a list of the facts that you should know and some of the things that you need to be able to do once you've completed this section. And we can start with lesson one. So lesson one, we're looking to look at the force that happens on a current carrying wire when it's placed next to a magnet. Uh, and be able to work out what size that force is using this equation and use something called the Fleming's left hand rule to work out what the direction of the force is. Okay, and we've asked to start with drawing a magnetic field between two magnets. And we ne need to remember magnetic field lines go from north to south. So I'm going to start by pencil just lightly showing what the magnetic field looks like around each of these in turn. So this one, normally the lines come out of the north and into the south, like so. And the same on this side. Okay, so in pen, I'm going to try and superpose these together. So these are the two magnetic fields, the individual fields that occur around uh, each of the magnets in turn. Now, to either side here, there's not going to be much change. That's going to stay pretty much the same. It's not really been influenced by the other magnetic field. But if we look in this section, we see that we're going to have these magnetic fields are going to overlap. And what you see is the arrows for these lines are going in towards here and the arrows from these lines are going in the same direction. So what will effectively happen is these lines will join together like this. And so the lines that are coming out of this North Pole rather than going all the way around so there they'll come across to this south pole here, but eventually far enough away that they'll go back as usual to go round. And the same thing here, where we will have Okay, so what we see is, in this case, with the two individual magnetic fields, the lines were going in the same direction. So they joined together, so we get a line going from this North Pole to this South Pole. And that obeys, still obeys the rule coming out of the North into the South. <clears throat> so again, we're going to do the same thing here, just very gently in pencil. I'm just going to draw the individual fields around these magnets so again the magnetic fields at either end aren't really going to change we're more interested in what's happening in here where the magnetic fields are close together so what we can see is if we look at a magnetic field going like this and one going like this you see here they're moving in opposite directions so they're going to push each other apart so what we end up with is these magnetic field lines are going like this And they'll end up going like this. So the, this side will stay the same, but on this side, we get here, rather than the field lines joining together, and we have north and south, here the field lines push apart, where we've got north and north. So, and here I have 
already in your pack you have printed uh, what these field lines look like. Now, uh, so you would make a comparison of what you did compared to what this answer is in here. Then question two says, for each pair of magnets, describe how the magnetic field predicts the magnetic force. So the magnetic field lines show the force on a magnet object or an object made from magnetic material in the field. So in other words, if I was to place a magnet or a piece of magnetic material in here, the north side is going to be pushed in the direction of the field line, the south side would be pushed in the opposite direction. So this, these lines are showing the direction that the north pole of a magnet would feel, uh, the force on that north pole if it was placed in the magnetic field. So in this case A, we can say lines mean that the magnets will feel an attractive force. Yeah, so the North Pole is going to be pulled in the direction of these arrows towards the South Pole. The south Pole is pulled in the direction opposite these arrows. So the point here is that the force that the magnets feel is because of the these field lines. It's because of the way the magnetic field, whenever we combine the magnetic fields of two magnets, the way that that magnetic field ends up shows us what the force is in this case these magnets are going to be pulled together. In this case, what we see is the magnetic field lines for B mean that the magnets will feel a repulsive force. So here what we see is this North Pole, it's going to be pushed in this direction, this North Pole pushed in this direction, or this one down here and this one up here. They're going to follow these field lines, so they're not going to be brought together. They're going to push each other apart. So what that means is that the reason why magnets feel a force is because of the magnetic fields. And it's when the magnetic fields of these two objects interact of these that join together, because remember, we started with the magnetic field of this one and the magnetic field of this one, and then I joined those magnetic fields together to get this picture. And it's when those two magnetic fields interact that the objects feel a force. So for objects to feel a force, a magnetic force, the magnetic fields need to interact. Now, this is something we saw in part one. Uh, we talked about the magnetic field around a current carrying wire. And to be able to work out uh, the magnetic field around a current carrying wire, this is on page 93 of the physics revision guide. So what we see is if we use our right hand and we curl our fingers around. So as if we are gripping the wire, and the wire is going this way. So if we were to curl our fingers around the wire and put our thumb is in the direction of the current, then the, our fingers, the way they curl around, the fingers show the direction of the magnetic field. We do this with our right hand rule. Right hand rule. Okay, so we can use our right hand to see what direction the magnetic field would be. So the magnetic field is around the wire, like this. 
and put my thumb in the direction of the current, I see the magnetic field is going round like this. So that would be the direction of the magnetic field around the wire. That was something from part one. If you aren't sure, you can go back and look back through your pack one. So in the same way, here we had two permanent bar magnets. Each have a magnetic field. When we bring them close together, their magnetic fields join up. We need to think what will happen when the magnetic field of a bar magnet interacts with the magnetic field of a current carrying wire. And what we can say is when the magnetic field of a current carrying wire interacts with another magnetic field, the current carrying wire will feel a magnetic force which is either attractive or repulsive. So in the same way as two bar magnets, when we have the magnetic field around a current current wire and the magnetic field around a normal magnet, when we bring those close together, the magnetic fields will interact so the objects will feel a force. So the current current wire will feel a magnetic force. So the first thing we might want to do is figure out, well, what direction will that be? What direction will the force be? Um, and in, the, in your PowerPoint and listed here in the pack, there is a YouTube video that explains this. So after you've listened to what I'm saying, Please go back and make sure you've watched this YouTube video, which talks about this rule in a little bit more detail. Uh, and once again, this is also described in your revision guide. So here what we use to show the direction is the left hand rule, not the right hand rule. That's what we used for working out what direction the magnetic field was around the current carrying wire. Here we're going to use our left hand. And what you need to do is you put your fingers and your thumbs all at 90 degrees. So my thumb is pointing upwards, my first finger is pointing from left to right, and my uh, middle finger is pointing towards me. So I can use this to work out the direction of the force. And what I can say is my thumb, so I've got my thumb, and I've got my first finger, and I've got my second finger, and the other two fingers don't matter. Okay, so there's my badly drawn left hand. And what we have is the thumb is showing the direction of the force. Our first finger is showing the direction of the magnetic field and the second finger is showing the direction of the current. So we can write down that <coughs> first finger shows the direction of the magnetic field that is of the permanent magnet that we've put close to our wire. And remember, it's always from north to south. Magnetic field is always from north to south. The second finger is the direction of the current in the wire. And then our thumb shows the direction of the force. Now we could, we could choose to do what we did with the two permanent magnets and draw out the magnetic fields and have the magnetic fields interact to see how they, um, to see how they interact and then work out the force that way. Uh, but um, this is very much easier. We can just use our left hand and we can work out directly what would be the direction of the force felt by the wire. Here we have a much nicer uh, drawn out picture. Once again, showing the thumb is showing us the direction of the force. First finger shows the direction of 
with B field here means magnetic field. And remember that's of the permanent magnet that we've put close to the wire. And it's always from north to south. And the second finger shows us the direction of the current. Okay, so this allows us to work out the direction of the force, but what we'd like to do is we'd like to work out what the size of the force is as well. And to work out the size of the force, we need to use an equation. Now, in an exam, the equation will be given to you. It's not an equation that you need to know. So it's written out here in this piece of paper that you would get in your exam. And the equation says that the force is equal to the magnetic flux density, which is the strength of the magnetic field, multiplied by the current, multiplied by the length. So the force is magnetic flux density, multiplied by the current, multiplied by the length. And as usual, rather than having to write these things out in words, we can use symbols, so we use the symbol F for force, and force is measured in Newtons, which I've written in brackets here. Magnetic flux density, the strength of the magnetic field, we show with the symbol B, and it's measured in units called Tesla, like the car, and its Teslas are capital T. Current is I, which has is measured in amps, or A, and we've got length, and length is measured in meters. <coughs> so we're going to practice using this equation to do some calculations, and in all calculations, we always use the four steps, writing out the numbers, uh, write out the equation, uh, substitute the numbers into the equation, and do the calculation. So here are our questions. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to complete these. You can then pause the video to check your answers. But the most important thing is that you check that you've done all of the steps. Okay, so we see for the first question, very straightforward. Now notice that when I write out my numbers at the start, I always write the symbol along with the numbers. This is because I need to make sure that I'm substituting correctly into the equation. So I've written out each of them individually, wrote out the equation, put the numbers in the equation, and I get the answer. For the second question, it is, it's exactly the same, except that here we've been given the numbers in different units. So the length has been given in centimeters. So I need to divide by 100 to put that into meters. The magnetic field strength or the magnetic flux density has been given in milli tesla, and this means a thousandth. So whenever we see this small m, meaning milli, we need to divide the number by a thousand to get it into the units. So here I had to divide this by a thousand to get it to 0 0.024 Tesla. And then finally, the current is 500, again, milli amps. So I need to divide by a thousand, which gives me 0 0.5 amps. And now it's very straightforward. I put the numbers in and I get my answer. You'll see that I've written my answer in standard form. This is a good thing to get used to using. It helps avoid making mistakes with drawing lots and lots of zeros, although it's not incorrect to write it like that. So for question, the next question, question two, part A, um, exactly the same as before. I don't have any conversions to do, which is nice and handy. The only complication is I'm no longer working out the force. I'm working out one of the uh, quantities on this side. So you have a choice. Uh, in this case, what I've chosen to do is I've just kept the equation as it is and put the numbers in. So I've got 15 for the force equals 0 0.8 times 4.8 times the length, which is what I'm looking for, which gives me 15 is equal to, and when I multiply these together, 3.84 times the length. And that makes it easy. Then I can see that to get the length, I need to divide by 3.84. So I get length equals 15 divided by 3.84 to give me this answer. Now notice this is what the calculator would give me. I don't write this out. You can see that I've got two significant figures in the question. 
There's no re reason to go beyond two significant figures. If in doubt, use two or one or two decimal places. If you're not sure what to do, don't go beyond two decimal places. Part B, again, I've written out the numbers, no conversions to do, so that's nice and easy. Uh, in this case, I've just shown that what I could choose to do is rearrange the equation like this, and then I substitute in the numbers as before. Once again, I get a number like this, and here I've written it to three significant figures. I would be justified also, given there's two significant figures in the question, I could write that as 47, but I wouldn't write out all these digits. Okay, some more questions to do. Once again, uh, just make sure that uh, where you've paused the video so that you can check your answers against my answers. Okay, so the difference with these questions is that I've removed where I've written down the steps to remind you to do the steps, but you have to remember you should always do the steps as I've done here. <clears throat> so here uh, I've got some conversions to do. K or kilo, kilo means a thousand. So 1.9 kilometers is equal to 1.9 times a thousand or 1,900 meters. So I have to multiply by a thousand if I've got the kilos, the K. Here I've got the current is in milliamps, so I need to divide by a thousand. You'll notice I've written in standard form. Um, then I have my equation. I haven't re uh, rearranged my equation. I've just substituted directly into it. Uh, and so that gives me that five is equal to 15.2 times the magnetic flux density. And then finally, that means that the magnetic flux density must be five divided by 15.2. Again, I get a lot, a lot large number of uh, decimal places and I need to round that and I've rounded it to two significant figures because that's what I have in the question. Next question, very similar. Uh, I have one conversion to do here. However, here I've rearranged the equation at this stage, which you're free to do, if you're feeling confident to do that. And I just substitute in. Here I, offer, I get in the calculator a recurring. I never write out all the decimal places. I don't write out a recurring symbol. I round it to two decimal places. So it would be wrong. It would be wrong in this case to write Okay, don't do that. You round it. And then the final question, <clears throat> again, I've got some more conversions to do from centimeters to meters, from millinewtons to newtons, and then the rest is very straightforward. So just make sure that you've paused the video and you check your answers. Okay, so we're going to come to this term, the motor effect, and it says state what the motor effect is. Well, the motor effect is really uh, talking about what we've been calculating up to now. So the motor effect is the force on a current carrying wire when it is placed in a magnetic field. This can cause the wire to move. Now, what's said on the PowerPoint, it's very important there is no force if the wire is parallel to the magnetic field. So the motor effect is this force that's felt on a current carrying wire when it's placed in a magnetic field. It needs to be placed at 90 degrees. I'll put it in here, at 90 degrees or perpendicular. So the wire has to be perpendicular to the magnetic field. If it's placed parallel to the magnetic field, there is no force. Okay. So in the next task, you needed to 
watch the video and if you haven't done so go back to the PowerPoint make sure you have watched the video and you're going to use a flow map to explain how the motor effect is caused by the magnetic field around a current carrying wire and you can use the diagram to help you. So in, your, uh, in the PowerPoint that was attached to the lesson, you'll see that there was a suggested answer given uh, for this um, flow map, a very detailed answer. Uh, here I've done a second version of the flow map, uh, a little bit simpler, um, which I'll just walk through. You can pause this video uh, to be able to read it in more detail. So first of all, we can say when a current passes through a wire, a magnetic field is generated around the wire, and that's picture one, which is what's shown in this picture. This wire is then placed in the magnetic field of a permanent magnet. That's shown in picture two. Here's the magnetic field of the permanent magnet. And we place the current carrying wire into that magnetic field. When the two magnetic fields interact, a force is felt by the wire and the magnet. So this is what we saw earlier in the lesson. When magnetic fields interact, there's a force felt, and this is picture three. And that force that is felt, that's what we call the motor effect. And that force could cause the wire to move. 